Moses, open the Red Sea. David defeated Goliath. The walls of Jericho collapsed. Many in the Bible overcame, and so can you. It seemed impossible for this person. Nothing is impossible for he who believes. Starting now, beyond living. It is now 8.30 a.m. and you will be with us until 9 a.m. You can prepare your cup or bottle of water for the moment of prayer. Hello my friends, a special good morning to all of you. Today is Monday, the 13th. And today is the day for you to see the manifestation of God's power in your life. This program here, Beyond Limits program, we are always here bringing to you results of faith. So many people that they have seen miracles taking place in their lives that were totally, completely beyond limit and in this opportunity we are going to be placing some names here into the holy oil you can give me a call at 389-9880 and we are going to have your name written down on a card your request where are you from? And we are going to place it into the holy oil. If you would like to WhatsApp me also, you can do so. 389-9880 and 709-8062. Those are my numbers. The Bible says here something that if we take a decision to put all our strength, to put all our faith into it, we are going to be able to see miracles that are beyond limit. Here says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You have this verse on your mind. You have this verse written in your heart. You know this verse and the whole Psalm 23 by heart. But if you look carefully, Perhaps you have not seen it being fulfilled in your life. You have said so many times, The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. This is the same that Gideon had with him, with himself. When he turned to God and said, Where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about? So in other words, the Lord is our shepherd. But yet we are in want of everything. You are a person that when you look to your finances, you sit down. You see your financing collapsing each and every day. But you have been a Christian. You are a Christian and you cannot understand the reason why. You have been getting a lot of prayers, but the pains are getting worse. The problems that you have still getting worse. The Lord is your shepherd, but your love life is bad. Family wise is bad. You don't have any agreement. You don't have peace in your house. You need a change. You need a solution. My friend, we are here for that. What you are going to watch now will be results of faith. People who took decisions to put their lives into action, or better saying, their faith into action, and they saw beyond limit results. What you are about to watch now are miracles that yet you can see happening in your life today in our days. We are going to watch and very soon I will return here with your program Beyond Limits. Very much so. A teacher by profession. But my life was just... Uh, I cannot even begin to say how, or how it was. It was destroyed. I was waking from a 
a month to month basis, a day to day basis. I used to get my salary at the end of the month. By the third day, the fifth month, the fifth day, it was finished. I had nothing left. I had three kids already, but I, we, we, we just could not afford them. I was married already when I came to the church. Uh, but as a teacher, it was today, you've got money, to, tomorrow you don't have anything. We couldn't afford the education of the children. We, 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 we were just fighting over everything. My sister and my mother were in the church already. I was invited by them. I had many, many, many problems that I realized needed some prayer to change my life. My children were sick. I was at the hospital on a daily basis. Uh, and I had an elder one who was more sick than those that had asthma. For years in the church, I used to think that I'm taking part of the campaigns because when I did my real sacrifice, I was at a point where I said it's now or never, because I was a teacher, but uh, my life was just completely destroyed. And I decided not only to join the campaign, but I, I resigned from work. And that's how my life changed completely. I took my last salary that I got from the school and I, I part took part in the campaign. The campaign was different because the others, I used to go just to go with the flow. I didn't, it was, it was more of, a, of an offering than a sacrifice. I decided this time to go all, all out, to throw myself into the campaign because I wanted my life to change. I wanted a turnaround in my life. A month thereafter, I got a, a, a job the municipality, but I, I knew it was not what I was looking for. I was not looking for a job. I wanted to change my life completely. And then within no time, it was a contract that finished. Whilst I was at that contract, I decided to register my business and the following campaign, it was then that I got this guest house that I am at now. God has blessed me with this guest house that started from very small. We started it being three bedrooms. Now we are nine bedrooms in the hall. He has blessed me with five cars. And then he has blessed me with a house. We were already in the house, but we changed it completely from what it was. And he blessed me with my children as well. The children that we could not even afford their education are all educated now. Be beyond everything else that I'm talking about, the most important thing is that God has blessed me with the Holy Spirit and I'm growing with Him, in Him, on a daily basis. Three reasons you need to revolt. Reason one, revolt is power. When Gideon revolted against the misery that Israel was going through, God said, Go in this your strength and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. God knew that Gideon's revolt was the strength he needed to deliver his people from the hands of the enemy. And so he chose him. Reason two, revolt demands action. When a person revolts, they are fed up with their situation and are ready to do whatever it takes to change it. God doesn't waste time in speaking to people who aren't willing to act. Because faith alone, without works, is dead.
Reason three, God also feels revolt. God is a just judge, and God is angry with the wicked every day. God feels revolt every single day when he sees the devil unjustly attacking people. Though we have a rich God, many continue to live in misery. They believe in the healer, but are sick. They have a savior, but their family is lost. God is searching for people who think like him so that he can show himself strong in their lives. So then, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Campaign of Israel in the Valley of Decision for those who refuse to take it anymore. I would say my life before I came from a spiritual treatment at UCKG, um, it was a life of a struggle because everything I would do, I had to fight for it because my parents were so poor and they couldn't even afford to take me to school. We were struggling because my parents were actually, my mother was a domestic worker and my father used to work peace jobs and we had to survive from the little food that they would get every month. Sometimes we would just have one meal in a day. And then, you know, it was so difficult because we had to go and ask from our neighbors. So it was a real challenge for us. I used to feel very embarrassed because when you go to neighbors and ask for something and then you're actually exposing your own family that you're actually lacking something. It was, although we had nothing, but it was embarrassing. And I had this thing in my mind that, you know what, I want to change the situation in my family. So it was really bothering me. Even if we go to school, I knew that, you know, we literally had nothing, absolutely nothing. My father actually got to change at work. So my mother was the only breadwinner. Just imagine now she had to live with that um, small salary. And it was actually wages. I would say probably to his maximum was 2,000 rand a month. But the problem that I had in my mind was this, how long is the situation is gonna persist? For how long? And I was still doing my, I think on a standard nine at that time. And I said to myself, you know what? This is an opportunity for me to change um, the situation in my family. You know, I had to push for my studies. I had to work day and night. And even when I got to matric, I had to give it all. After varsity, then I got a small job, which is in a sort of like seven articles. Okay, but the salary that I was getting there was too little. It couldn't support me. I couldn't even support my family back at home. So I needed something that will make a significant change in my life. There was a friend of mine, he saw my struggle because we used to live together. And he saw my struggles because I used to ask from him most of the time. And he said, you know what? I know a place that can change your situation. Why wouldn't you rather join me on a Sunday? Let's come together. That's how I started coming to the spiritual treatment. Honestly speaking, when I came to the church, I was lost. And uh, people were closing their eyes, praying, and I was looking around, looking at the pastor. And I thought, you know, it's one of those brainwashing, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> churches. And, but, you know, something that I felt inside of me, I felt peace. And I said, you know what? Perhaps I need to come back again. And the following day, I came back. As I was continuing coming back to the church, I felt more strength. I felt my eyes were actually more open, I had more confidence. And I spoke to the pastor and I explained my problem and I said to him, listen, I'm suffering. I have a degree, but the job that I have, it's, I'm not happy with. So, and he said to me, you know what? You need to join the chains of prayers now. Okay, you need to come every Monday. And then I decided to come on Mondays as well to fight for my life. Initially, I thought that the campaign was a money-making scheme for the church. Because at that time when I came to the church, they were speaking about big money. And they would call all these monies. And I thought, who am I? Where do I fit in? It's not my place. But as time goes on, I realized when I heard the testimonies of people testifying about their situation and how God has done wonders in their lives. And I thought, this is an opportunity for me. Let me go for it. To accumulate my vow, it was never easy. Because for me, I had this battle in my mind. What am I going to offer to God? But later on in the process of the campaign, a thought came into my mind that I have to surrender my salary, my entire salary. And it was never an easy decision for me because I had to pay rent, 
I had to prepare my lunch at work, everything, just to take care of myself. And I realized, you know, if I surrender everything that I have, what I'm going to be left with? But the confidence inside of me that my life is going to change, whether today or tomorrow, but something has to change because I was actually fed up with my situation because even that little salary that I was getting, it was going to finish in any way, in, within a week. And I said, you know what? I have to throw myself into the fire and I had to surrender my sacrifice. After surrendering my sacrifice on the altar, you know, I had the strength inside of me to work harder at work. Because remember, that time I was still saving my articles. Okay, I felt that confidence inside of me that, you know what, from the time that I used to come to work, I need to increase my hours. So I said, you know what, for my life to change, I have to stop complaining. Let me do something about it. So I started coming early at work, working extra hours, putting more effort, doing that extra work. As a result, my salary started being increased slowly, 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 and I could even afford myself at that time. After seeing the change of my first sacrifice, and I had this conviction inside of me that, you know what, on my next sacrifice, I'm gonna go bigger. And then what I did on my next sacrifice, the bonus that I was getting from work, I had to sacrifice that also. As part of my spiritual sacrifice, I used to attend church more from Monday to Sunday. I'd never missed any service because I would go to work and come back and attend the church. Even during the week, I would make sure that I come to church and then I would take the instructions as well from the church where pastors would give us advice that please read more of the Bible, distance yourself from the entertainment, you need to hear the voice of God. So I committed myself in that and then I started reading my Bible more, you know, meditating, praying at night as well, asking God to give me direction. And then from there, my life started changing because I got a vision to start my own business. And then that vision was burning inside of me to the point that I even said, you know what, I'm going to, 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 um, to resign from work and then start my own business. Even though I had no idea how to start a business, how to set up everything, but I had this desire to go and start my own business. After opening my own business, God has blessed me with good employees. He has blessed me with cars. I got about five cars now. And also, I was able to build a property for myself because we used to live in a small, <laughs> a small house. And I was able to build a house for myself. And now I can even afford my life now. I can, you know, go where I want to because God has given me that courage and strength to sustain myself. So the greatest blessing I would say that I have received more than anything that is material is the Holy Spirit. So it keeps me going every day. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Those of you who are faithful can present your first fruits and offerings and any other donation via online banking to Republic Bank to our account name the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God and our account number 340-8000-53501 because God will not forget about those who have been faithful to Him. 389-9880 and also 709 8062. Those are my numbers, my WhatsApp numbers, phone numbers. You can call, text, you can send me a WhatsApp, your Telegram. I will be able to get your name, your request to be placed here into the Holy Oil. Because very soon before the ending of our participation here on our YouTube live program, I'm going to be making a special prayer on your behalf. Bear in mind that just the prayer is not, is not enough. Just the prayer will not change your whole life. You need to take a decision to put your faith into action because for you to see miracles that are beyond limit, you will need to live where you're at. You have to come here to the house of the living God and from the altar. Today, we are going to be teaching you what to do 
and how to do it in order for you to change your whole life. Today, 10 o'clock in the morning, myself, I'm going to be together with you here on the same altar. Same altar. Few, uh, an hour and a few minutes from now, we are going to be together here. And also, we are going to have midday with Pastor Marcos, 3 p.m., 5 p.m. especially with the Strong Nation, with Pastor Marcos again. And late this evening, half six, we are going to be back with the last service of the day. In every other universal church, countrywide, you can also be with us because, my friend, today, 10 o'clock, midday, 5 p.m., we are going to be helping you to overcome every financial problems that you are facing. I have here the first person that have contact us today. Her name is Cherian Mohammed from Cuba. She had a nice surgery and also she has financial problem and her daughter is jobless. So Miss Cherian, your name and the name of your daughter is here. I also have here uh, Budsai from Sour, unemployed, and his wife has leukemia. So, Mr. Budsai, your name is right here into the holy oil. I also have here Tony, and Tony had a stroke. Tony, your name is here into the holy oil. Uh, do not call my name on the air from Claxon Bay addiction and also family problems so my friends your names are here your requests are here into the holy oil you can give me a call at 389-9880 and also 709-8062 i'm going to be placing your names here into this holy oil a special prayer is going to be made by me very soon on your behalf. You are going to watch some other testimonies. There were uh, situations that we call beyond limits. But yet, people, from the moment they took a decision to use their faith upon the Word of God, they saw results. Because until when, you are going to have this verse... Psalm 23 verse 1 in your heart, you know it by heart, but in fact, you have not seen it being fulfilled in your life. You say, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want, but in fact, you have been in want of a lot of things. But today, Monday, your life can change. You just need to take a step of faith. And my friend, come to learn how to put your faith into action. My water is here. You should prepare also a bottle of water because I'm going to be blessing it for you before the ending of our participation here. Let us see some other results of faith and very soon I'm going to pray for you. My name is Fernando Lopez, I'm, uh, I'm 47 years old and I'm the CEO of Divine World Video Productions. God works with those who revolt because only those who have nothing to lose are ready to obey His voice. The Campaign of Israel in the Valley of Decision. I was working for a company cleaning floors and offices, um, and all I made was $300. That's all I made. I made $6 an hour, and the guy used to take, the, the guy that used to hire me, he also paid me $300 and took money from my check with excuses. So he was robbing me, basically. But I didn't know. So as soon as I learned about the sacrifice, that's, that's all I, I, I understood how, you know, my relationship with God needed to be in sacrifice daily. It was not something that I did six to six months. It's something that I needed to do every day. And that started with me at home, you know, away from everybody, just me and God, me and my wife, me and my kids. So I started sacrificing my whole life. 
And then my relationship with God in this whole become one, you know? So my first sacrifice was about $300. That's all I had, I didn't have anything. You know, I was working for a company, cleaning floors and offices, um, and all I made was $300. You know, and that's all I had. So that's all I put in the altar. And I started working for this company right after. Um, and I started making $10 an hour. And within a year, um, I was the assistant manager and then they made me the manager of that company. Within a year, I didn't speak much English. You know, I didn't know much about anything about management. You know, I, yes, I was in college, and, but I learned everything about, you know, in, in general, computers. That's, that's, that's what I did. I knew nothing about, you know, accounting and, you know, uh, all that stuff that you need to know for to manage a warehouse and 16 stores in Florida. Um, I remember one of the campaigns, I had my first apartment. I had put all the furniture inside of my apartment. I was so happy with my apartment. I never had a place, you see? And now I have my own place, all furniture up and all ready to go beautiful. And God say, that's what I want. And I turned to my wife, I said, honey, God is asking me for everything we have in this place. She said, do it. We went probably a month and something, eating on the floor, sleeping on the floor. <laughs> we sold everything. And one day I came home, my whole apartment was furniture from top to bottom. I didn't buy anything. Someone bought it and gave it everything to us. I didn't even had, you know, I didn't even have the opportunity to carry anything upstairs. They did everything for me. So those things started showing me how God works. And you know, from that moment, I just, I kept moving forward. From now, um, you know, I've sold the company and put it in the altar as my sacrifice. Um, I gave everything I had in all my bank accounts um, because there's nothing that I put in the altar that doesn't come back to me. As soon as I learned that sacrifice was what all God, God was asking, that's all I started doing. I've been, in, I'm, I'm in the church for now almost 20 years, or more than 20 years, I'm sorry. I've been in every campaign since day one. I've never missed one, and I will never miss one. Never. Because I understood that the altar is my connection between me and God. That's where I find God. That's my fire. That's where I go to recharge and go back and fight. It's impossible to regret when you gain more than what you give. You know, it's, it's impossible. You have to be really, I'll say the word crazy, so when someone is giving you more than you give and you regret it or you feel bad about it, you have to be really crazy. You know, the altar, when you learn the secrets of the altar, and, and the amazing part is that it's no secrets. Everybody hears the same thing you hear. Hey, come to the altar. And you know, the God of gods will be, will be faithful to you. And if you don't understand that, you're never gonna understand anything about God. The Campaign of Israel in the Valley of Decision. Gideon did like this. Pay attention. Those who are timid and afraid, fearful, you may go back, return. 22,000 said, I am fearful and afraid. And they returned. Is there a way for a person like this to make a difference? Is there a way for a person like this to prosper? But go and ask the 22,000. Pay attention. Go and ask the 22,000. Do you want to stay in a palace, in a mansion? What will they say? If you ask them, do you want to eat well? What will they say? If you ask them, do you want to have the best of the land? What would they answer? If you ask them, do you want to be great? What would they answer? They would say yes. It's funny. To want it, everyone wants. But to be valiant, to be courageous, to go to war, not everyone wants. The Unisocial team ventured to the county of St. David, to Toko, the most northeasternly village on the island of Trinidad, where many are living under the poverty line and are at the bottom of the economic barrel.
friend, a special good day to you all. I am here together with the group of the Universal Church, Unisocial Group, and we received from the government of Trinidad and Tobago 66 hampers, and we took some here to the region of To for the last fortunately family. And we are going to do this work and we are going to be distribute this hamper to them. I would like to thank all the, the volunteers and those of you that you did your part in order for us to be here to donate this hamper. Also, I would like to give thanks you for the for the government of Trinidad and Tobago that gave to us this opportunity to help those who are in need. So from here, from the entrance of Toko, we are going to to look for the less fortunate family and we are going to be distributing these hampers. Came here to the house. What's your name, Miss? Aine is Batista. Miss Aine, how are you doing? Very well. Tell us, how many years do you live here in Toko? Almost 25 years. 25 years? Yeah. Do you love this community here? Very much. Yes. So what's the good things about Toko? It's a living without um, no bandits, nothing, and we live properly here with one another, giving to each other. Great. You understand? Miss, now let me ask you, um, we are in this pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. Locking down, many people, they are not able to provide to their family. And I know that things are, is very hard for you as well. Tell us more about your current situation. My current situation is that right now I just got a little five days work with you up here and understand, but we don't it closed up. So it's a struggle right now. But God has always provided for this home. And that's the reason why we are here to help you. I would like a few words you give it thanks to those uh volunteers that they volunteer themselves in order to help them. What could you say to them because the hampers that they donated for us to give it to you? It's through the gifts of God mm -hmm. that we appreciate and we consider everything that was given to us, as small mm -hmm. as it is. Okay, so here is the hamper. Do you think that this hamper is going to help you? Yes, everything is needed. It's worthy. Thank you. Okay. Well, friend, the same way that today we could be able to help one more family, you also you can do your part through your donation, as you can see the account uh, name of the church, and also through the account number, you can send your donation, or you can pass to one of the universal church close to you, and you can help us to help those who are in need. And so, the Unisocial team, together with the pastors of the Universal Church, did not forget those who are going through a hard time in the community of Toku and environs. They met with the residents to distribute hampers and offer prayer of comfort and blessings. Our Lord and our Father, in the name of your Son Jesus, I ask you for you to bless the house of this gentleman. Lord, we provide for them the food, the physical one. But the main one comes from you, that's health, protection, and more than that, salvation to him and also to his family. We are grateful to the government of Trinidad and Tobago for the contribution made to this movement of love in these trying times. What do you think about that, uh, this full donation? Uh, it will help a lot, and I thank you all so much. Amen. So, one more family we are feeding. And we are doing this service, this unisocial, because we got help from the government. And together with the Universal Church, we are doing our part. Wherever you are, may the God of the Bible bless you all in Jesus' name. Very well, as you can see, we are here in the region of Toko. The unisocial work has been going on. We went to Ikakas, we went to Miaro, we went to several communities. Thanks for the donation we have received from the government of Trinidad and Tobago. We have received 66 hampers and we have been distributing it to several people, several communities. And as you can see, the people in Toko, they have welcomed the hampers with gladness. And we wish we could get so much more from other companies, different business dealers, so we can have much more to donate to the people who are in need in this crisis, in this time, pandemic times, where people are in lack. We want 
to put food on the table so they will have food in Jesus' name. Thank you, Unity Social! Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Those of you who are faithful can present your first fruits and offerings and any other donation via online banking. To Republic Bank, to our account name, the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, and our account number 340-8000. 53501 because God will not forget about those who have been faithful to him. 389-9880 and also 7, you know, 98062 are the numbers that you can call to have your name placed into the holy oil. I'm going to be placing some more names there into the holy oil. But before my friend, let me remind you that you are able and capable to see the manifestation of God's power in your life. You are able, you are capable to see God in your life. You just need to take, my friend, a step of faith. Many people, they know that the Lord is their shepherd, but yet they cannot see no results. Yet, they cannot see God's power in their lives. But why? Because they lack to use their faith. We are going to be teaching you how to join this campaign today. We are going to be teaching you how you are going to do, how you are going to bring God down to you, just like he came down to Gideon. In other words, Gideon was telling God, the Lord is my shepherd, but I lack everything. I miss everything. I don't have nothing. So he turned to God and said, God, how can you tell me that you are with me if when I look to my life, I only see disgrace? When I look to my life, I only see problems. When I look to my life, I see misery. I see poverty. How comes God? What kind of God am I serving? That says I is my shepherd and yet I cannot see nothing. I'm still in want. Friend, today we are going to teach you how to put your whole life on this altar. How you are going to make, my friend, all the promises in these words here. In the word of God, in the Bible. To come out of the papers and be re become reality. And be fulfilled in your life. Ten. 12, 3 p.m., especially 5 p.m., and also half 6. We are going to be on this altar here, teaching you how to bring God down and show His power in your life. I have here Leonard Duncan from Mayar. He has health problem money not staying in his hands. So, Leonard, your name is here. Do not call my name on the air. She's from Tobago and she has uh, sickness in the foot. It has to do a knee replacement. Friend, your name and your request is here. I also have Nick. He's from Kunupia. He's suffering with depression, blockage, and also unemployment. Nick, your name is right here. I have uh, Joyala. From Arabella, uh, Joyla has family problem, health problem, heart problem, and also she's unemployed. Your name is also here into the holy oil. Rosaline from point 14. She has family problem sicknesses all over her body, and she needs a general prayer. I also have here Carol. She's from Tobago. Sentimental problems. And also she wants her own house. I still have a lot of names here to be placed into the holy oil. Pastor Junior is coming up at one. And he's going to be placing some names into the holy oil. You can keep calling. You can keep sending your WhatsApp from anywhere in the world. Especially from Trinidad and Tobago. We are going to write on those cards here. 
and we are going to be placing your name into the holy oil. I am sure that God will provide to you breakthrough. He will give to you great results. There are no miracles to God that we could say they are beyond limit because God is limitless and he has the power to deliver you set you free prosper you heal you he has the power to transform your whole life my friend I'm going to make this prayer for you now and I do believe that God is your shepherd and if you are decided to use your faith you shall not be in want. He will provide to you all the promises that he has done on your behalf. Let us talk to God now. Please hold your water because my friend, I'm going to pray for you at this present moment. My God, in the name of your son Jesus, I have here in my hands this bottle of water. And many people also have their water, their glass or their bottle of water in their hands. This person that is watching me from, beyond, from uh, the hospital bed, from the bars, beyond, behind bars. This person that has been watching us now, my God, from home and suffers with depression. This person that has been going through a lot. God, please sanctify this water. Bless this water, my God, with your power. Touch the water of this person because there is no sicknesses, there is no disease, there is no problem that can remain in this person's life after they drink of this water. God, I pray on behalf of those who have been decided to sacrifice their all on this altar. To those that have placed their lives here on the altar yesterday and to those that will still do it, my Lord, throughout this week week. God bless their lives. Bless this campaign of Israel. Next campaign, God, we are going to have a lot of testimonies to give because we do believe that your power, we do believe that your greatness will be manifested in people's lives. Father, hear God in this vessel with the names, with the holy oil. I pray on behalf of those that called, those that text us, those that my Lord, they have expressed in few words the problems that they are facing in their lives. So many people, Lord, they are going through a lot, unemployment. To those who are going through family problems, sentimental problems, spiritual problems, those that my God wrote to us and they got a stroke, they have my Lord problems that only you Father can solve, my God please do it, deliver them set them free and bless their lives because in the name of Jesus I am determined and I declare that those that their names and their request are here into this holy oil or my father they are blessed I also pray on behalf of the prime minister the other ministers of Trinidad and Tobago God we pray and we ask you for you to enlighten the prime minister give him long life give to him knowledge give to him understanding to continue helping this nation Trinidad and Tobago in the name of Jesus I surrender this country into your hands bring to an end this violence that has been happening that has been taking place in this country in Jesus name those of you who believe say amen amen my friend open your water now Drink some of it and be blessed. Praise God. I do believe that you are blessed. And I do believe that the power of the living God has come upon you. You can continue calling. You can continue texting us throughout the day. Our helplines are open 24-7. And you can call, you can text to have your name placed here into this holy oil. And uh, friend, those of you who want to sow your seed in this ministry, you can take note of this number that you see here. 
This is the bank account of the church. And you can also send your offerings, you can sow your seeds, you can send your faithfulness via online banking. You can also, my friend, be prosperous because the Lord God will fulfill all His promises. He is your shepherd, as this word here says, as He promised. He is your shepherd, and I prophesy that you shall not be in want. My friend, you can send your uh, first fruits, you can sow your seeds through this number, through this bank account, and I do believe that you are going to be blessed. Today, 10 o'clock, I'm going to be at number 40, this place that you can see there, that building that you see now, that is number 40 South Key on the corner of Dun Duncan Street. You can come. We have free parking available. We have a security guard by the gate. He will let you in. We are complying with all the regulations according to the Prime Minister, the Minister of Health, for you to come into the building, for you to take part of the service. You are going to need a mask, and you have to make sure you sanitize your hand upon arrival otherwise you will not be able to come into the building and take part of this great and special service that will be teaching you how to become a successful person financially wise and also in every area of your life so friend we are going to meet you at 10 or 12 or 3 p.m or 5 p.m especially or half six this evening for now have yourself a very blessed Monday. Pastor June is coming up soon with the Miracle Hour. God bless you all.